It was 811 years before the founding of the Empire of Man that the forest spirit named Drycho went mad. A great bray herd under Morgor the Corrupter marched on the Witherhold, and the greatest of Athelorn's champions rallied to defend it. At the Battle of Anguish, the Elder Tree Spirit Coetel seized the Master of Skulls and squeezed the life from him, as the Mage Queen Ariel called upon the powers of the forest and shattered his mutated form. But where his blood fell, insanity spread, for no living being touched by Murgur's essence could ever truly recover. Idavach, the glorious oak that had housed Drycha and her handmaiden since the dawn of time, was reduced to a gnarled, twisted shell, and ever after, this place was known as the Glade of Woe. When the Corruptor's blood was spilt upon the Sacred Oak, it severed any remaining connection Drycha might have had to her sanity. Her malevolence and hatred, that had festered since the coming of the Elves, rose to the surface, and she retreated into the depths of the forest, watching and waiting for a time when she could reclaim Athel Lorne for the trees. It was whispered that her counsel with Coetel led directly to the Great Betrayal, that saw the Ancient One slaughter Orion's bodyguard in a bid to prevent his rebirth, and it was their unholy union that saw the Wildwood grow ever more malevolent, as the Tree Man Elder was imprisoned deep within. After the coronation of Emperor Karl Franz in the year 2502 of the Imperial Calendar, Dreitsche began work on freeing Coetel from his eternal prison, leading ambushes in the forest of Arden and at the edge of the Drakwall. But by the time reinforcements could arrive, the inhabitants of each monastery had been torn to scraps. She was acquiring relics with which to tear down the wards of the Wildwood, and the final one lay near Altdorf. The Deepwood host mobilized and brought battle to the city. For three generations, the name of Elspeth von Draken, the Dark Lady of Noln, Magisterix of the Amethyst Order, and Arch Wizard of the Lore of Death, has been spoken of in hushed tones in the reeking tavern gutters and vaulted noble halls of Noln alike. And for three generations, her lonely, blackened tower has stood at the edge of the Gardens of War, on the outskirts of the great city, and stories of the graveyard rose have been used to frighten rebellious children home before nightfall, lest the Dark Lady snatch them up. But few understand the dark power she wields as sorceress, and the influence she holds in the courts of Duchess Emanuel von Leibowitz, Elector Count of Noln. The truth is, that Elspeth von Draken is but one in a long bloodline touched by the winds of magic, a bloodline that has produced both monsters and saviors in its time. And she is one of the most powerful amethyst wizards of an age, so attuned to Shaiish, that even Balthazar Gelt is wary of her intentions. Like a specter of death, Gowned in robes so black as to appear as living darkness, and bearing a scythe so sharp it seems to murder the still air, Elspeth leads her forces into battle near the walls of Altdorf, having felt the dark magic coalescing around Drycha's malicious form. And Luther Huss, the prophet of Sigmar, rides to her aid, as the fanatics of the god king Sigmar Heldenhammer march beneath the shadow of a great carmine dragon. And so the Briar Maven of Woe marches at the head of the Deepwood host, surrounded by her vicious little dryads and the Azrai of Anmir, the Witherhold, a spiritual realm caught in a perpetual cycle of death ever since Murger's evisceration so many years ago. The Dark Lady of Noln and the Empire State Troops of Whistlin and Reichland have gathered in force to stop Dreitch's rampage, a road of blood and horror leading from the Wildwood all the way to the gates of Altdorf itself. The Azrai Warhost complete with glistening rows of Eternal Guard Spearmen, the malicious little Dryads, who when you think about it have got to be some of the most unsettling units in Warhammer, and the other angry spirits of the Wildwood, determined to see Durthu and Adon whose evil counterpart return to the Kingsglade. Some Way Watchers will provide some very nice killing power from range, and across the way, Luther Huss leads the flagellants of the Empire into battle with Elspeth von Draken and her Carmine Dragon on Overwatch, ready to drop some Purple Sun Caesarius on the Wood Elves' heads. And things are gonna get started real quick as the Waywatchers open fire on the crossbows to try to get that range off the field, and look at that, two volleys is all it takes, and that crossbow unit is pretty much useless, about to rout, and one more volley now going into the middle of the flagellants. Now, lots of unbreakable units on the field for the Empire, but very, very low armor. So to be honest, the armor piercing for the Waywatchers is a little bit wasted, 
but taking some of those infantry off the field early will be real nice before they can even close in the melee. There are some great swords which will also be great targets, and Dryads and Empire State Troops have already collided into each other, and it's gonna get real messy real fast. Zealots and Swordsmen are gonna be slaughtered in droves in these initial fights. Dryads and Eternal Guard are just simply better, but an unbreakable front line against an entire army of fear and terror, the nightmares of Sithral, yeah, that'll be incredibly useful. And Luther Huss, the Prophet of Sigmar, is right here in the middle of all of it. He has a series of battle prayers, just like the Berserkers from Norska. It has three separate sages, each one providing greater and greater buffs the longer he's locked into the close quarters combat. He deals flame damage, magical damage, and he has the Banner of Eternal Flame, which imbues nearby units with the same flaming attacks that he has, which as you can imagine, is pretty damn useful if you're fighting the Wood Elves. He's an iconic Empire character and is gonna be hugely beneficial for the state troops in the coming engagement. But the Flagellants are doing one thing and one thing only, locking the Dryads and evil spirits in place for the cavalry to come in from the flank and get their rear charges off. Knights of the Blazing Sun and Demigriff Knights on the field, and especially those Knights of the Blazing Sun, if they can get a rear charge into the Tree Spirit units, they will absolutely shred them and set them alight no problem. Could be a huge deal for the Empire if they're able to get into the rear. There are some Azrai Spear War Dancers in the back waiting for those charges. Purple Sun Azarius about to go down, and Amethyst Magic, a colossal orb of crystalline darkness, shredding its way through the ranks of the Glade Guard and Waywatchers. Not typically a spell you see used against loose formation units. Definitely not ideal, but it looks awesome, and it is going to pick up some kills before veering off into the Wild Blue Yonder. Great Swords absolutely melting under the focus fire from the Azrai Archers, already retreating, and the Cavalry have sprung their attack. Azrai Spear War Dancers resting to cut them off, and butchering the few unlucky knights who got caught in their midst. Demigraph Knight still circling, waiting for something to kill. The Wild Riders are in the back, waiting to charge them down. With the support from the Spears, they could probably take that fight, although it would hurt both sides. And here's Drycha, casting a Pit of Shades directly into the middle of a gigantic Empire blob. Empire Halberdiers and Zealots getting absolutely gymmed here. Beautiful cast from the Pit of Shades, and that will rack up quite a few kills. A lot of Crimson on the ground there, as Elspeth von Draken pulls out of the fight and away from some of those Eternal Guard in the center. Forest Dragon in the back, shutting down some of the artillery, terror routing them, but the Silver Bullets are fantastic, especially for killing Tree Spirit units. Remember, they have physical resistance and magical attacks like the Silver Bullets have. Will cut through that like a hot knife through butter, so that Forest Dragon going down real quick. Wild Riders engaging Demigriff Knights in the back. Swordsmen supporting Wild Riders do not want to stick around in that engagement or they will get absolutely smashed here. Luther Huss, more grand players of Sigmar going down to support the Empire in the center as the Forest Dragon routes. Now, let's quickly cover what these two lords bring to the table. Elspeth von Draken, Dark Walker, replenishes HP map-wide when casting, increases power reserves and recharge rate. Death's Timekeeper gives minus 5 leadership, minus 10% speed, and minus 10% vigor map-wide, which is absolutely insane, and Spell Devour increases miscast chance by 30%. As a tree man ancient wades into the middle of the Knights of the Blazing Stun and starts smacking them around with those roots. And he'll get some kills here for sure, but they do do fire. They do do, huh? They're gonna deal fire damage there. That's gonna do some serious work against the tree man, so he's gotta be careful. Wild Riders did pull out and re engage the Demigriff Knights. They're getting some good kills here, but not supported by Eternal Guard. They're gonna need some help there for sure. And despite all her awesome qualities, believe me, Elspeth is awesome. She's a death caster on a dragon. It's never gonna be bad. She is 3,000 gold on her Carmine Dragon, and she's very squishy. Only 50 armor, so very expensive, very squishy. This, those Zealots are pretty squishy too. Just got bisected by a tree man as he carves through their ranks. But Dreitcha is awesome as well. Eternal Hatred, 12 bonus for infantry, plus eight melee attack, plus 15 armor, plus eight melee defense. Rouse to Wrath allows her to summon Dryads when they're in a forest and Fanatical Resolve grants her 25% AP when she's in Forest as well. So she gets some really nice buffs when she's in the Forest, and she has great casting of the Lore of Shadows, and she is about to carve through these Zealots. I mean, she's just gonna do some messed up things to them, man. She's gonna do some mean, malevolent things as she does some, I don't know, karate kicks to their faces and just tears them apart. Blood pouring out of the air right there, and now Carmine Dragon coming in to deal with her. Look how gigantic she is. She's like three times the size of a regular man, and she is standing in the face of this Carmine Dragon and does not care. Smacking it around a bit, and that spellcaster 
Uh, the Carmine Dragon and Elspeth Von Dragon don't want to stick around. They are not melee combatants to the same level the Dryad Queen is there. Briar Maven of Woe will chase her off and look to re-engage somewhere else. So Elspeth going flying away, and the Wild Riders trying to spring their attack up the center, but tied down by the Knights of the Blazing Sun, they are not going to get into melee combat as Dreitcha starts just painting the town red here. Brutal stuff. Brutal combat with those flagellants, and she will finish them off in close quarters combat as the Wild Riders try to get past those Knights of the Blazing Sun and get at the... Oh my god, that's just disgusting. That's so awesome. So awesome. Yeah, they're gonna try to pull away from these Knights of the Blazing Sun and get at the Silver Bullets up the center. They're getting some really good shots in. Fear will cause those Knights of the Blazing Sun to rout. The Wild Riders also wavering now, and they might tear a route with the Carmine Dragon so close by. And those Knights actually end up rallying right next to the Wild Riders, and they'll continue fighting as they try to battle over who damages those handgunners there. Luther Huss and Dreitcha now in close quarters combat, and this is a very important duel. Luther has really high melee attack with those Grand Prayers of Sigmar, and he deals magical and flame attacks, so he will cut through Dreitcha's physical resistance and do additional damage with the flame. That's a big problem for her. She's taking a lot of damage in that fight. We'll check on that shortly. Another Pit of Shades goes down. On top of the Great Swords, really nice cast. Great use against armor. Those Great Swords will take a lot of damage, and so will the other units in that blob. And this, this is what the Prophet of Sigmar was built for, man. He is a boss amongst boys. 86 melee attack, 542 weapon strength, his buffs up. But Dreitcha has a trick up her sleeve. Occam's Mind Razor going off, allowing her to slice through flesh, soul, and consciousness into the very core of his being. And with 40% weapon damage and AP damage now additional on top of everything else, she's up to 560 weapon strength herself. And Huss has really low melee defense, only 35. And you can see in only three attacks, he went from 2,500 HP down to like 300. And he is getting beat up now. And that was looking really bad for Dreitcha. And all of a sudden with one final crushing blow, the Prophet of Sigmar falls and Dreitcha stands victorious over his corpse. There is a lot left to do for her and the other spirits of Sithral the Wildwood. That was crazy though. I mean, I thought Luther House was going to win that fight and then all of a sudden Dreitcha comes back with three or four attacks, just smashes him. Doesn't miss a single one there. Maybe might, might have missed like one attack out of like five. But the Carmine Dragon still causing lots of havoc in and amongst the skirmishers, landing in the Waywatchers and ripping them up in a big tail swipe, rips to the flank and will slaughter a bunch of them. They're gonna have to try to disengage as quickly as possible or they will go down. Treekin in the center, still trying desperately to finish off these flagellants who are just so annoying. They are not tanky, they are not hard to kill, but they are just all unbreakable. They will never rout, and it was genius to field this many of them against the Wood Elves because Dryads don't have a lot of armor. Uh, zealots and flagellants will do okay against them. They're not gonna do bad, they won't win, but they'll do, they'll trade relatively cost-effectively and they won't ever route to the fear. So really, really nice pick there. And the Branch Wraith and Dreitcha returning to the safety of their reinforcements as the Waywatchers move up to begin their skirmishing again. Those Waywatchers and the Glade Guard have put a lot of work in in this battle. Got a lot of kills, but Dreitcha now getting sniped by the cannons from long range. And there's a big group of Empire State Troops and Flagellants in the center. Only a few Treekin and some of the routing units are coming back to the fight. Trying to get back into the center of this engagement. Silver bullets are in melee for some reason. Don't know if they're out of ammo or what the deal is there. We can see so much of this ground littered with the corpses of the Empire in the shadow of the walls of Altdorf. We're on the outskirts of it right now. And those Treekin are beasting it up. But can they do it? Can they pull it back for the Wood Elves? Wild Riders shutting down the artillery crew. But they're so damaged at this point. Only nine models left in that Wild Rider unit. Bodyguards of Orion might not be able to even finish off this artillery crew they're so beat up they're wavering and they might route pretty soon here but lots of treekin and tree men coming back to the fight lots of units really really damaged at this point in the battle both tree men actually below a thousand hp for sure and they're chasing off the silver bullets right now see those stomping animations as he chases after them that's got to be so terrifying and I, I still say it to this day, Wood Elves, by far one of the best DLCs Kratos has ever done for any Total War, not just Total War Warhammer. Seriously amazing animations and feel. They just got the, the spirit of the tree spirit so correct, so right. 
And yeah, that's just a glorious thing to behold. Great Sword still in the fight for now. Branch Raid's getting in the fight as Starfire Shafts pour in. And that armor piercing goes to work. They're gonna need it. They're gonna need it because Drycha is real close to just running from the battlefield completely. She's so low after that fight with Luther and the artillery shots from long range. Not looking good for her or her army, but this is far from over. Most of the flagellants are dead. Great swords are super low. A lot of the range units on the field are routing to the tree men. Tree men's routing now though. Probably less than 500 health at this point. Drycha has rallied and she is coming back to the fight, but very, very low at this point. And one or two can shots might be enough to put her in the ground. And that Carmine Dragon is still on the field. Elspeth Von Draken and her Death Magic still around. Starfire Shafts pouring in, getting into melee and doing that awesome animation. That is so badass looking, dude. That's some Legolas stuff right there. Charging into melee, getting those close quarters shots off. And now it's Crossbows versus Gladeguard in melee. And I'm pretty sure Gladeguard should be able to stop that fight. I don't know what their health was looking like before they charged in, but there are... Oh yeah, they routed. They routed. Do the Wood Elves have enough? Can they bring this back? There is some wavering and there is some rallying on the flanks here. Tree Men are coming back. Elspeth Von Draken is super low. She's also below 1000 HP at this point in the battle. But she causes terror. And terror in this late stage of the game could be enough to seal the deal. Charging into the flank of the Waywatchers. They don't have any ammo left. They're just going to have to fight it out and they're not going to. They're running for the hills. Balance Bar is shifting in the favor of the Empire. The battle is not over yet as more Eternal Guard and War Dancers charge in from the flank. Treekin coming in as well. They just need one Fear Route or one Terror Route and that's it. And Treekin are jibbing a bunch of these Great Swords and Zealots here. But Elspeth on Draken, she's hunting for something. Going right for Drycha. One last attack will send her running. And Drycha, the Briar Maven of Woe, will not be returning for that Relic. She is booking out of there, man. She, she got out of there real quick. And that charge from the dragon might have sealed the deal. It did. Carmine Dragon and Elspeth Von Dragon will take the field. But losses for the Empire were extremely heavy. And they lost their profit of Sigmar. Not a good day for the Empire. But they will take the field. And finish off Drycha. And make sure she doesn't unleash the terrifying tree spirit Coetel in the Wildwood. Drycha with 260 kills from the Pit of Shades and a Penumbral Pendulum. She did some serious work, and she beat Lutherhaus in melee, but Elspeth Von Draken, such a versatile lord, adds such a nice tool set to the Empire roster. It'd be awesome to see her in an official capacity, because she really would offer something completely new and unique and different to the Empire roster. But 136 kills with the Purple Suns, pretty nice stuff. I mean, the melee capabilities like Carmine Dragon are pretty scary too. Way Watchers, 185, 182, 210 from long range, death from above. Hawkish Precision, reaping a terrible toll against the Empire, and the Treeman did some pretty nice work as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. See you next time. Indy Pride, signing out for now.